kind of a serial entrepreneur. I did Durham Catering. I had that for a while. And I had started Only Burger, which is the first food truck around here. And then I started Rise. And then I kept going for more. Well, my motor's always going. Um, but I wasn't really prepared for the last one. I think the, the thing that sticks out to me the most about where I am now is, you know, I sold out. There's a part of me that sold out where I had total control of what I did and I lost that control and it broke me. It broke me mentally. I remember walking on the streets in Las Vegas lost and I didn't know where to go. What were you feeling at that time? Like I didn't want to feel. Where were you headed? I wasn't. So you come back home. I need a pill. I need an antidepressant. I need something. And so I went to the doctor. You're not really an addict. You're not really bipolar. You have some characteristics, but you need a hobby. And I don't know why it popped into my head at that point, at that moment. If it hadn't, I don't know that I'd be here right now, but I said, I've been thinking about bird watching. And he chuckled. And he said, do you think you can slow down enough for bird watching? I says, a challenge? Because everything that I motivated myself for in my whole life, from football to being an airborne ranger to starting companies was structured as a challenge. And I needed a challenge to get me out of where I was feeling I was at. YouTube videos, equipment, what do I need? What do I need to do? What do I do? And then I joined three bird clubs. I joined the Carolina Bird Club, Chapel Hill Bird Club, New Hope Audubon. I signed up for a trip to the Outer Banks. I bought binoculars. I bought a scope. And then someone said, you need to read the big year. I had no idea what it was. So then I watched the movie that night and I realized there's a competition by counting how many birds you can count in a calendar year. And I said, this is me. This is it. This all I needed was it to be a competition to get me out of my head and out there. I'd been um, out birding one day by myself. And I, time had flown and I didn't have my phone. I, maybe I was out there for six hours or so. And I, I got in my truck and I was driving home and I was like, Wow, I, time just kind of took another dimension to me. I wasn't, I was out of my, I was in a meditation, meditational state and I just busted out crying. I was like, thank you, God. Thank you. Everybody in this real world or outside of burning, I'm their boss or their partner or they need something from me. And birding, I need something from the people that I'm birding with. And this is, God, I needed that. You're talking about for the last 20 years of my life, everybody's needed something from me. I'm the one that gives them the answers or shows them how to do something a lot of times. This world, I didn't know anything about birding when I got into it. I needed help with every part of it. I had to learn every part of it. I had to make the mistakes. And that's liberating. That's been incredibly good. I almost don't want to learn too fast. Because I want to be, I want to be the needy guy, because I'm learning so much and I make so many mistakes. It's made me more empathetic to the people who work for me, when they make mistakes, and I think that softened me up a little bit. And I think that's a really, a very good thing for most people who work for me. I feel this obligation because I got out of that with burning, to share this, my burning story with as many people as I possibly can to talk about it with as many people as I can, to hear their stories and to, sh to share their stories. Because this was, it may say my life. And this is a, a world where people are hurting right now. More than at any other time of the 55 years I've been on this planet, people are hurting more than they ever have.